Oh, shoot, I've known Johnny since um, about mid 1990 uh, through his brother Danny. Um, I actually used to go see him play in some of his previous bands back in the day. Uh, Glenn, I met him probably in the early 90s. Um, you know, we've been friends ever since. He's uh, you know, so just like Johnny, I've seen him. I go see him play in some of his earlier bands too. Uh, uh, Johnny Walden, I met him uh, through through Johnny. Uh, he, had, he had played at the at, at the bar. On, um, he had played there one night, and, and uh, John Walden played with him in the band uh, in another band. Uh, I played with him that night. That's how I met. That's the first time I met John. The band was uh, actually Johnny's brainchild some years ago. Uh, he started the project by himself and did the uh, first album was uh, was a solo album. Um, he moved back into town. We got reconnected. Uh, we were in a band before several years ago. Uh, so he called me up. We started jamming, and then it progressed to uh, us finding another guitar player. We jammed for a while, and then our drummer came along, and um, that's where we are now. First time I heard of the Bald Dog Project, Johnny shows up, comes to the bar that I had uh, that one time. Uh, he shows up at the bar and we were talking to him and like, he would come play him there. And uh, he gave me a CD begging for change. And I listened to it and after the first time, it wasn't something you could listen to one time, you had to listen to it over and over and over again. Uh, even on that one, it was just Johnny himself, it was something that he did on his own. First time I've actually listened to the music. Uh, you know, there, you know, into what it is today. I just think it was the combination of, of, of it being an acoustic thing. Um, it was different kind of than what's been going on around here in the scene in New Orleans when we, we started up a couple, three years ago. And the fact that I think it was just a, a lot of curiosity as to, there's no way this is gonna sound even remotely worth anything. And I think a lot of it initially just people started showing up just out of curiosity. And then once they heard what we did and saw what we were doing visually with our live show, they were just hooked in. They just started coming regularly. But the band's music, my, my, my favorite thing, uh, yeah. which kind of really drew me into the band, I like acoustics. I've always had uh, acoustics, was always kind of my band. Uh, you know, acoustics and piano. Uh, what they were doing was different. Nobody was doing it. You know, I, you know, I never heard any like you know, heavy metal acoustic. I mean, it was. It was big difference. Even the heavy metal bands, even thrash bands, you know, when they did an acoustic version of their songs, they tuned, they toned it down. Uh, they, they play, play, you know, the Ball Dog Project, it's, it's, it's metal, it's just it's, it's, it's acoustic. The style of music kind of decided itself, really. I mean, we all come from heavy metal and 
really hard rock backgrounds, you know, and uh, from old cover bands to writing our own stuff, it just kind of came about, really. I mean, I figured we were all kind of getting older to keep playing electric heavy metal every night, so we kind of scaled it down to acoustic, and uh, it just came out, you know, it feels right. The doll show was uh, it was pretty exciting, man, to uh, share the stage with a, basically an icon like that, you know. Um, also, I'm a really huge wrestling fan, and Doyle and the Misfits were involved in wrestling for uh, for a little while back in the early 2000s. So that was kind of like an extra added bonus, you know. Uh, besides that, Southport is just a great venue to play all around. We were approached by a gentleman from the San Francisco Bay, California Bay Area. Um, he is an accredited voting member of the Grammys. And basically it falls into like two, a two step process. So first you have to be put on a, what they call a consideration ballot. Um, that's basically they weed through everybody's stuff and then they pull the people that are gonna be put on the consideration ballot, which then goes out to all of the voting uh, Grammy members and then that's where the actual nominees come from so uh, we made it through like the first round into the second round and then did get past that but nonetheless to even get considered to that point was pretty good considering uh, we would have gone up against like Megadeth, Gojira The writing process is, is pretty simple really I sit at home and rack my brain and think about stuff. And I play it. I come in here, show it to them, and then we all make it up. Yeah, he pretty much brings the meat and potatoes and we kind of throw in the, uh, the side dish. Yeah, I mean, for me, you know, being a drummer, it's just, I like a lot of groove and feel. So if, if it's got, if it doesn't have that, it obviously needs it. And if he's on the right path, then I'll kind of, just pick up and try to put my own kind of touch to, to, to the song, you know. And then, of course, the arrangement of the song, too, we kind of all kind of chime in on that portion of it. I basically bring in a rough draft, and then collectively we dissect it and, and, and make it right. 